Hey guys, I hope that everybody's doing okay. Um, I am coming to you with another video here, so bear with me. I'm a little <laughs> sleepy and I'm a little out of it today, <laughs> but it's Friday, so bear with me. I'm not sure when this video will actually go up, but it is Friday today, so I hope everybody's doing good. I feel a little chilly and everything, but um, I want to talk about, I know that I've talked about this before, but I want to talk about negative and wicked people, um, and I want to read you Psalm 1. Uh, really quickly, okay, and um, and then we're gonna go ahead and elaborate. <laughs> so, okay, so Psalm uh, chapter one, verse one, and it's only six verses, so bear bear with me. Um, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on the law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers, not so the wicked. They are like chafe the, that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor the sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Um, time and time again has God brought me to this scripture over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and I've learned so much and I continue to learn so much out of just those six verses and of course correlating with different verses in the Bible all throughout and um, what I really want to talk about is this verse didn't really truly ring to me or make sense or even start to um, produce anything in me if that makes sense until I actually started getting around wicked people and how they operate and evil people and given some of the circumstances that I've been around in the last few years and just the people that I have to deal with on a daily basis and um, the situations that I have encountered throughout the years and things like this I had no idea how wicked and evil people were until I actually got around these people that were operating in this way and maybe I was always around these kind of people and it wasn't until I really started getting closer to God, we'll, ju we'll just say, um, that I, that I was opened, that my, you know, that his spirit was opening my eyes to it, you know, and I really see it now and I truly see it now and never again will I mistake <laughs> not testing a spirit or testing the actual spirit that's operating in someone or that's behind someone ever again um, just because they look good they sound good they act good they talk about the Bible they say I'm saved and you know all that everything looks good they're beautiful they're handsome you know they've got everything going for them they've got all this money cars they've got beautiful kids beautiful what you know it the it goes on and on and on all the things that you can look at in a physical sense um, and what you see before you but I have truly learned now <laughs> to okay what you show me is who you really are <laughs> I'm no longer going to believe what I see you know and what you're saying you know everything sounds good and looks good but I'm going to see how you actually operate and how you act and how it makes witness and bears witness in me and my spirit that I'm operating in, which is the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to test to see if you're in alignment with what you're saying. Um, and sometimes that takes time, you know, sometimes they don't show their true colors right away. And sometimes they don't, you know, it, it's hard to pinpoint and it's hard to pick, but God always is faithful to show you and put that irritation in your spirit like, man, something isn't right. If you feel like something isn't right, if you know that something isn't right and you've seen that something isn't right through, you know, through your spirit, then it's not right. It's not right. And you go with that. You go with that. Um, there are those people, of course, that they're drinking, they're smoking, they're talking evil, they're, they're showing blatantly who they truly are um i'm talking about those there are those people that it's plain as day who they are they're wicked they're acting wicked and that's why i believe it says don't sit in the seat of these people don't even sit around these people because their influences 
can taint you. And what are sinners always trying to do? They're always trying to get you to do what they're doing. They're always trying to get you to see what you're doing isn't right and what they're doing is right and you need to be doing what they're doing, you know? Um, rather it be, okay, come to this party, you know? Oh, you're so uptight, you know? I'm just using this as an example. Oh, you're so uptight. You're, you don't ever get out. You don't ever have fun. Just come and party with us this one this one weekend, you know, <laughs> knowing that you don't drink, knowing that you're a good person, knowing that you don't, you've turned away from those things, you don't do those things, and they're just getting you to try to do it anyway, you know, or um, they'll be like, uh, you know, ah, oh, you know, just do it this one time. It's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna hurt you, you know. Um, just, just let loose one time or whatever, you know, whatever. They're always trying to get you to do what they're doing. <laughs> and those are those people that are evidently wicked and they're blatantly living out their sin and they don't care. They're doing it out in the open. They're a totally negative person and everything that they think and they do and they say is negative and you know that they're a wicked person. But then there are those, those there are those sneaky people. I call them sneaky people because they are very sneaky and they are very good at what they do. And they are very good at hiding it. And they will appear to be everything you think that they could be. They look good. They're acting good at first. And, you know, but you feel it in you that this person is not right. Something's not right. Go with that. Go with that. Go with that. Don't even give the time of day to that person. Because you know that God has bared witness in you that this person is not right. And you need to walk away. You need to go away. Don't even waste your time, your breath, your energy, your nothing. Don't waste anything on these people. Walk away from them because God is telling you right then and there, this person is going to ruin your life. They're going to hurt you. They're going to harm you in some type of way. Don't do it. Don't engage. Don't get into it. And every time that I have gone with that, it's been, okay, I'll, or some, I'll see later on down the line that they were an evil person or that they were wicked or sometimes... He'll just tell me not to deal with this person and I'll never see them again, you know, <laughs> whatever the case, you know, um, he's definitely warned me about that. Um, I'll give you guys an example that happened to me actually pretty recently. Um, I went to the dollar store recently with my children, me and my children like to go on the weekend to get us a little snack run. That way we get ready for the weekend and, um, you know, we pop on a movie or we do a Bible study or we play a board game or something like that. And we always get our little snacks, our little popcorn and our little chips or whatever, just to, um, do that for the weekend. So I do this every week. Um, and there was this lady I knew, I know her and I know of her and I thought that she was, you know, a good person until I actually one day, you know, she was always talking good and speaking good. And then one day I heard her talking on the phone with a relative or something like that. And I heard how evil and wicked she was talking about the person. She was she was talking about, you know, in a mean and evil, wicked way about someone else to somebody else on the phone. But I didn't know that until I actually heard her talking. And I was like, wow, she's actually, she's not a good person, you know. Okay, so I already knew she was a wicked person just by that. And, um, cause she was, she was putting this person down. Like I've never heard somebody put somebody down. So I seen her in the dollar store the other day and, um, she was like, Oh, how, how are you doing? Hi, how are you doing? And I'm giving her, her usual smile. Yeah. Hey, cause I live in a small town. Everybody knows everybody, you know? <laughs> um, and I was like, Oh yeah, how are you doing? How are you doing? And then she made it a point every aisle that I went into, she went into and um, she was giving me a vibe of, oh, I don't really care about her. You know, the way that she was, you know, she was, she would look at me for a second and then turn away and act like she was stalking the shelves or whatever. But then she would, I would go to a different aisle and she would follow me to the next aisle acting like she was putting stuff up. But I was paying attention to what she was putting up and what she was putting up wasn't what belonged there. <laughs> and that's when God was like, this person is following you. She means you harm get away from her, get out of the store, leave. So <laughs> I was like, okay, kids, you know, go ahead and grab the rest of your things and we're going to go ahead and go. I didn't tell them. They still don't know to this day what was happening, but I knew she was following me for some reason. But the way that she was looking at me was like, oh, you know, I don't care, whatever. You know, she was acting like she was caring about her business, but I could see through that. And, and you know, like God was just blurring in, in me get away, get out, you know, check out, check out. So that's what I did. 
<laughs> you know, and when you have those kind of things, and I have no idea what her intentions were. I have no idea why she was following me in the store, but I didn't really recognize it at first until God brought it to my attention <laughs> that she was following me. And then I started seeing, oh, she's following me. And she kept going around me and circling around me. And I had, I, I mind you, I had put my purse on the floor too. And I never do that, but it was so heavy this day that it was hurting my shoulder and I had put it on the floor and I was looking at the calendars or something like that for the next year. And she kept circling me, circling me. And I was like, God was like, pick up your purse, pick up your purse, get your kids, check out and leave. And that's exactly what I did. So that's just an example of that. And many things like that have happened to me. And I now listen to that. I don't ignore it because what if that lady had some intention to steal my, my purse or steal my money or heart hurt me or harm me or anything. She could have had anything in her heart. I don't know. But thankfully I listened to that, to, to that voice inside of me, this Holy Spirit telling me, get your purse pick up your stuff, get your kids and get out of here. And that's exactly what I did. And I, you know, I said, oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. And that's what I said. I said, I'm going to go ahead and buy my calendar online, you know? <laughs> um, and you know, and I said, I said that out loud too. I said, I'm going to go ahead and buy my calendar online. Go ahead and get your stuff, kids. Let's go. You know, but I didn't make it apparent to her that I was afraid, you know, cause I was, I was afraid. I didn't know what she was going to do. Um, but you know, I kind of played it off and I just grabbed my kids, grabbed our stuff and we left. But my point in saying all of this is you really have to see, you really have to see what is behind people and how they're operating because these people can deceive you so quick, so quick. And you don't know, you have to be all too careful nowadays and you have to be listening in such a way that you can hear and, and, and my mom told me this one time, she said, Zipporah, <laughs> she may not even remember telling me this, but this was back whenever the coronavirus, I think was going on. And a lot of people were doing a lot of kidnapping and trafficking people and women and kids and stuff like that. And, um, she said, Zipporah, you don't pay attention. You don't pay attention enough. You need to pay attention to your surroundings. And she said, because any, anybody could snatch you up or snatch your kids up or snatch this up and snatch that up and you won't even know it, she said. So you need to start paying attention to your surroundings more. And ever since she told me that, I have been paying attention to my surroundings and I have been noticing different things going around me. Um, now, I always paid attention to my children, always, you know, but I never really paid attention like when I was out and about by myself to pay attention to myself you know I was kind of nonchalantly just you know going on about my business but um when she gave me that bit of information I followed that ever since and I have paid attention so it is it is never good to let your guard down it's never good to let your guard down always be alert always be aware and always be listening and sensitive to the Holy Spirit when he's guiding you and directing you. He is your protection. He's protecting you. You never know what what harm or danger lurks around you. Okay? And even just hanging around wicked people. I do not... It does not matter if it is your family member. <laughs> if it is your family member and you know them to be a wicked person indulging in blatant sin. Stay away from that person. It plainly says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers you are not to do it it does not matter if it's your family members like i said if it's your own mother if you know that she's wicked stay away from her pray for pray for her at a distance you do not, just because she's your mother, have to hang around her and have to be around her and have to do this and that and the other for her because she's bullying you into doing it because she's your mother. And you know that she's operating in Satan. You know, you, you, you cannot do this. <laughs> you know, and I've learned this hard lesson myself. And yes, it is a hard lesson to learn. 
but it will protect you and you'll be blessed because of it. You are to be in the word of God. You are to be operating in the counsel of the Holy Spirit. That is who your counselor is. That is who your guide is. You are to know the word of God and to study his truth. You know, that is what you are to be doing. Just because she's your mother or just because she's your sister or just because she's he's your brother or she's your cousin or your best friend or whatever you claim the title is, the worldly title is, if they are operating in Satan and they are blatantly being a wicked and evil person and they have a narcissistic, which is what they call it nowadays, but that's really a word for demons, you know, if we want to tell the truth about it. That is a demon that they are operating. You want nothing to do with that person until they go and repent to God and show that they are actually living a life for God. Don't be fooled even if they say, oh, I found Jesus and I've been saved and I'm changing. And No, <laughs> I have a story to tell you guys about that, that, that hopefully I'll be able to give a testimony on later on, that those people are full of it. They're full of it. They will tell you anything to get what you have because they know you have something they don't have and they're going to steal it from you and take it from you in any way that they can and they'll tell you whatever you want to hear. They'll tell you whatever you want to hear. And because they think that you're a gullible person and you very well may be, but you need to come from that and you need to start operating in your spirit, in the Holy Spirit that God has given you and test that person that spirit behind that person because it's always a spirit that's operating in somebody whether it be from Satan or from God and many times it's from Satan many a time there are not there are not too many people nowadays that are operating in God <laughs> and these are they are so beautiful rich talk good no scripture are eloquent but if you're allowing anybody to speak into you or control you or manipulate you, that is not truly of God, but they sound like they are. You've got to repent of that. You need to run to God and you need to make God first. The word of God first. The word, the Holy Spirit first and what he's speaking into you first. That is what you need to make first above all else, above anyone else, above anything else. And that's it. <laughs> anything you are placing above God or anyone you are placing above God you're not operating in Jesus you've got to repent go to God tell God you're sorry and turn away from even that and get back into your word study your word don't just read it but study it do it be obedient to it try to live the best life that you can to it you're not going to be perfect but you're not going to be operating in Satan, though, because anybody that's operating in the Holy Spirit, you want to do what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. You want to do what Jesus is telling you to do. You don't want to do what Satan is telling you to do. And if you do what Satan's telling you to do, you repent of it right away and you turn away from it because the Holy Spirit guides you in everything. He guides you in everything. And the word tells you, tells you there is nothing that God has hidden from you. The word tells you everything you need to know about life. Everything and anything you need to know about life is in his word. So you need to be reading the word. You need to be operating in the Holy Spirit. And you need to listen when it comes to these evil and wicked people. I could go on and on about scripture talking about evil and wicked people. But that's it. Stay away from them. Stay away from them. It doesn't matter the title. Stay away. <laughs> Protect yourself. Guard your heart. Guard yourself. Guard your children. Guard your family. Guard your household even. <laughs> Don't let nobody step into your house that is evil and wicked. Don't do it. Because they're meaning you no good. They are meaning you nothing but harm. Because they've got Satan's agenda against you. So expel them. <laughs> I love y'all. Hope y'all have a good day. Bye.